All right, what up, what up, what up, what up? You already know what to do. It's your boy, B-Phil, and it's time to learn something new or just a review. So today we're going to be talking about how to run Olama locally and store all of your generations from Olama inside of a Langfuse instance. So buckle up, let's jump right into it. So first, I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So for all the people who are relatively new, this is just going to give you a high level overview of what's act, what are all the actual components under the hood. And for those people who know what's going on, this will give you a nice refresher. So here we are. Us as a user, we're going to go ahead and write a Python script that is going to send a generation or some type of chat to a Quen 27B model on our local computer. And from that Python script, we're gonna go ahead and store that in a database that's managed by Langfuse. And from there, we'll go ahead and look at the Langfuse dashboard where um, that's on top of all of that data to go ahead and look at the different traces, the different spans, and the different components that Langfuse offers you. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And for this particular setup, we're going to need Olama. So we're going to go to olama.com and we can go ahead and download Olama here. And it has all your different distributions. I have Linux, so I would use this command. But for whatever distribution you're using, use the command listed here. Next, we're going to go ahead and find Quinn 2. And once we have Olama installed, we can go ahead and go to our terminal. We can copy this command here on this Quinn 2 page, Quinn 2 run. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us an interface that we can go ahead and chat with. So we can go ahead and send it a message. What is Pi? This is after it's been installed. So you can see it's going to go ahead and give us an answer to what is Pi, right? So now we know. Okay, great. So now what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and set up Langfuse. And so if we go to the Langfuse website, just so you all can see what I'm doing, ultimately, you can go to their docs and find self-host, and we're gonna use this Docker Compose. So first we're gonna need to clone the actual repository, we're gonna move into the repository, and we're gonna Docker Compose up. So let's go ahead and we'll just copy this, and I will go to my local services, and this is where you would just go ahead and copy that, right? Git Compose, or excuse me, <laughs> git clone, right? Let's assume I already did that. Then you're gonna go ahead and CD in a length views because I already did do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and Docker compose down because I already have it running. And of course, Docker is not running right now. That's great. So we're gonna go ahead and start up Docker. And I'm gonna go ahead and Docker compose down. And that's gonna go ahead and remove those instances. Now we're gonna go docker compose up. And this should give us a nice length use deployment. So we can go to our browser now and go to localhost 3000. And what you'll be greeted with, just so you know and you get an understanding. So we'll go localhost 3000 and you'll be greeted with this sign in page. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and sign up for a new account. Make sure, of course, use your, so you click this button, name, email, and a password, and then you'll be able to see this here. And this is where we go ahead and get started. So in order to start this particular project, we wanna to go to the settings on the Langfuse dashboard, and we wanna go ahead and click the create API keys, and it'll create an API key so that we can go ahead and log this data to our Langfuse instance. So we're gonna click the open AI tab, and under this .m section, we're gonna go ahead and copy the Langfuse secret key, the Langfuse public key, and the Langfuse host. All right, great, once you have that, now let's go ahead and start our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this, and I'm gonna to go to my directory, and we got Langfuse, Let's go Olama Lane Fuse, and we're gonna go ahead and open up our project. Now we have our project here. So what we can go ahead and do is go to our folders. So let's go ahead and open up the command line. We'll go Python 3-m vim vim, right? 
Then once we get our virtual environment, we're gonna go ahead and source that, them, bin, activate. Once we activate that, then we're gonna go ahead and pip install olama python.inf and langfuse. Once we have all of that installed, then we wanna go ahead and create a .inf. And once we do that, we wanna go ahead and paste in our secret key, our public key, and our host, and save that file. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a start.py. So I'm gonna go ahead, we can all, we can type this over again. So we're gonna import olama. We're gonna import, we're gonna say from.m import load.m, and we're gonna say from langfuse import langfuse with a capital L. Next, we're gonna go ahead and load the environment, load.m. And then we're gonna go ahead and create an instance of Langfuse. So we're gonna say Langfuse equals, again, Langfuse, but make sure you put those parentheses so we can go ahead and instantiate that object. And we got that Langfuse client, y'all. All right, so now let's just go ahead and test a llama. So we'll say output equals, and we'll say llama.generate, and we're gonna go ahead and type in the model that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the command line really quickly, say llama list, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste there we go. So we're gonna do Quint 2 7B latest for me. It's gonna be a little bit different for you. It might just be Quint 2. Make sure you're using the model name that you got from the Olama website. And we're gonna go ahead and send in our prompt. And we'll just say my favorite question, what is pi? Question mark. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and run this. So you'll see that I'm running it via Jupyter Notebook. You can do the same just down here in your command line by doing python start.py but I'm gonna go ahead and run it this way just because it's a little bit faster for me and this should give us the results we're looking for. All right, so we're just gonna wait and this might take a second because it has to actually load up the model, right? Okay, so great. Now we're gonna go ahead and check the output and this part is important. We wanna take note of what we're getting for this output so that we can go ahead and track it via lengthy. So we can see that we have the model name, we have created at, we have our response, that's important. Then we have some context. It doesn't look like Olama is gonna give us any output tokens. So it looks like prompt eval count 12 and then eval count 12, 72. That might be our input and output. So we can go ahead and note that down here. So I'm gonna close this. So we wanna say eval count and prompt eval count. So let's just go ahead and note those because we wanna go ahead and track as much information as we can. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and import one more package. So we're gonna say import UUID. And this is so we can go ahead and get a unique identifier for each trace. And if we start to do some type of programs where we have multiple steps or loops, we can pass in the same trace ID to go ahead and log all the different generations step by step. So first, let's go ahead and create a trace. So let's call this Olama trace. And we're gonna say langfuse.trace. And we're gonna give this a trace ID. Or let's just say we're gonna give this an ID. And let's go ahead first and say trace ID. We're gonna create that. We're gonna say uuid.uuid4, right? We're gonna create that. And make sure that we cast this as a string, very important. And now we're gonna go ahead and pass in trace ID and let's give this trace a name. And let's say name, and this is gonna be Olama Video Trace. Boom. Okay, great. So now this should give us a trace. And what we wanna do next is we wanna go ahead and create a generation. So we're gonna say, let's go ahead and first create our user prompt. So we can pass it in as an input and say, let's, what is pi question mark? And now we'll go ahead and create that generation. So we'll say Olama generation, and we'll say off of the Olama trace object, we'll just go ahead and Olama underscore trace dot generation. And for this, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name of Quinn two generation YouTube. Great. So now we can go ahead and pass in the input as well. And we know that this is just gonna be the user prompt, but you can pass in multiple 
inputs by sending in a JSON object or a dict. So we're gonna say prompt and let's say use a prompt, great. And maybe we wanna pass in, no, we'll just leave that there for now. So now we have our generation. And at the end of our generation with Olama, we wanna go ahead and end this generation. So we'll say Olama generation dot end. And we're gonna go ahead and pass the output. So we'll say output equals output. And we'll get this and this should be our response as we saw before. So let's just, actually let's just keep this right here. So we're gonna get that response. And then next what we wanna go ahead and do is we wanna say our usage and this is gonna take a JSON object and this is gonna be input. And we know for our input, we wanna send in our output.get and we're gonna get the prompt eval count. And then for our output, Uh, yeah, so we should be, be able to say output and we want to get the output dot, oh, you know what? I didn't close this and we're going to say output dot eval count and we should, let's do get and let's say eval count, boom, and we should be good to go here. Okay, let's format that and Last but certainly not least, we want to upgrade, update the trace. So we'll say olama trace dot update, and this is just this will just give us a running log of the the last generation that happened. And at a first glance, we can see what last happened. So we'll say update dot trace, and we'll say input equals use a prompt. Whoops, and then output equals the output, and we'll get everything. So now we can run this. And what we'll see if we go to our length views deployment in localhost, we'll do our traces and we can see we have our trace here, Olama video trace. We're gonna click that and we see it says zero. Yeah, zero for prompt and 91 for completion. So this probably isn't gonna happen every single time with the llama, which is kind of odd, but you have a good idea of how to do usage if you're utilizing another LLM. And so now we see that we put some input in here. We have a prompt, what is pi? And then we have this particular mechanism. So pi is the output and it explains it for us nice and neat. So we have one output. Let's just do go ahead and try something here. We'll do some structured output here. So let's go from pydantic and we'll import base model. And let's just go ahead and say class user detail, and we're gonna pass this a base model. And so we're just gonna do something a slightly more complex so I can show you how you can add additional data, metadata specifically. So we're gonna say name, and we'll say string, and then we'll say age is an int. And so now what we wanna do for our user prompt, let's modify it. Let's say extract name and age. And let's make this a formatted stream from, let's say, from the following text. And we'll go ahead and put a new line and let's go ahead and pass in Brandon. And let's separate this actually. So let's say instruction prompt. And we'll set our instruction prompt to these instructions. Right, so let's say the user prompt is gonna be Brandon is 33, and we're gonna pass in a new line, and then we're gonna pass in the user prompt, and then we're gonna do another new line, and we're gonna say follow or output into output valid JSON in using the following schema, but don't repeat the schema. And of course, we wanna go ahead and send in the user detail dot model JSON schema. All right, and now we have a new prompt. And so what we wanna do now in our generate, let's go ahead and pass in our instruction prompt. 
And for our, our generation input, we're gonna say the prompt is the user prompt. We'll say, let's say instruction prompt. And for our instruction prompt, of course, we're gonna go ahead and pass in our instruction prompt. And let's go ahead and say JSON or model schema. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in the user detail dot model JSON schema. So this is gonna go ahead and show you, th these are all the different inputs that we have. So let's go ahead and say here. And one thing we can do here as well is we can go ahead and sign some metadata. And again, this is a JSON object. So we'll say version and let's just say one. Great. So now what we can do is we can make sure we see all this correctly. Let's remove this usage here and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and run this. So it looks like it ran super quick. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the output. Let's go to our actual dashboard and we see all of my video trace. And we look at the output here and it looks like it gave us user detail and it gave us Brandon and age 33. So it looks like it worked. And you can see here, we have our metadata version one and then we have our input, our prompt, our model schema, and then our instructions as well. So basically, LangViews gives you a very good way to track all your local experiments so you don't lose any of that data and you can go back and do all this local Olama fun stuff. So hopefully you learned something. So if you did, or if you didn't, go ahead and hit that like or dislike button. Leave me a comment about what you thought. If you're a builder, I have a school community going on. Go ahead and click that link in the actual description below. And of course, as always, go out there and build some, y'all. We out. Peace.